What's going on? It's your favorite crazy hair creator. And I'm back with more news. So far this year, I've been contracted to do four different sets of commercial campaigns for brands like DJI, Canon Time Socality Collaboration, Pro Photo, and they were all shot using the iPhone. Recently, I was contracted by DJI to create some tutorials for their Instagram on the Air 2S, which is insane by the way. And I shot them mainly using my iPhone, obviously cut with some of the Air 2S footage. Apparently they performed well enough, bringing in around 400,000 to 1.2 million plus views each. And they asked me to do another set and another campaign for a different product, which was the Osmo Pocket 2. Well, a re-release of the Osmo Pocket 2. That brings us to today. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how I personally shoot paid high quality commercial content solely using my iPhone. Let's head to the mountains and get some content. Something that has always blown me away about the iPhone is its ability to shoot in direct sunlight. This goes against everything that I've learned in the travel industry. Specifically, when I started shooting with Sam Colder, he pointed out how much better lighting is for photos and videos at either sunrise or sunset. So it seems like really contradictory to be out here trying to film in the middle of the day but the iPhone just loves it. It exposes way better than this camera does or any camera out there. It's just so naturally good. And I try to use that to my advantage. That way I have brighter content and it just pops a lot more. And especially when you're out in the mountains or just in the northern parts of the world, you have about 18 hours of light in a day when it comes to summer. And if you're not using any of that, you know, you're kind of just wasting the day. You might as well take advantage of all that light and at least shoot something. Now, thankfully the phones have adapted to be able to work in these conditions and I'm just so grateful for it. And that's a big reason and why I'm not afraid to shoot on my iPhone in the middle of the day. One major difference to note when shooting on your iPhone is to shoot in a higher frame rate. If I upload a video that was shot in 24 frames on my phone specifically to an Instagram story or a post, it seems to drop frames. But what I make sure to do is film in at least 30 frames per second as opposed to my usual 24 on any other camera. Remember that you can always export it as 24 if you need to. So I would shoot at least 30 frames per second just to be safe or obviously 60 if you're gonna be slowing it down in post. You can't tell by these mountains behind me. We just pulled up to our location where we're about to shoot the rest of this video. And essentially, I just wanna talk about pre-production really quickly. This is something that you need to do if you're not doing yet. So that when you pull up to location, you know what you need to shoot and you can actually just like make the most out of being here. Everything's gonna go wrong because it always does when you're trying to make a production. But as long as you know exactly what you're looking for, you can find it in a multitude of different locations, props, people, shots, and you'll make something work. Now, if you're intending on shooting a bunch of different deliverables, whether it be photos, videos, reels, whatever it may be, it is so important to have at least a shot list and a priority of what you need to shoot first, and especially if you're shooting specific shots at like sunset per se. Knowing that is so critical so that when you pull up to a location, you know how much time you have until you get those shots or at least identifying the few key shots that you need to make your content work is gonna be critical in allowing you to have more time, more flexibility and more creativity. I mean, just more fun in general when you're on location because you don't wanna spend the entire time shooting and you don't have to. As long as you and the crew or whoever you're shooting with understands what you need, and like collectively what you need, you can either get those right away or know when to start shooting because you know exactly what you need and it won't take as long for instance, we're shooting a DJI commercial, we're shooting two branded campaigns with Kiera, and then I also have another brand or two to include if I get time. But we have a priority list of what we're shooting and what shots are going when. And that's how we're gonna enjoy our time here at this gorgeous location. One of the biggest benefits of shooting on the iPhone 11 or 12 Pro is that you get the wide angle. That way you don't miss out on any insane location that might be right behind you, such as this. It's very important to shoot wide when you need to because you can crop in afterwards. Using your wide angle not only gives you a different perspective, but it allows you to make your entire environment look just way cooler, especially if you're moving past different environments and objects. And I mean, it would just suck to not get all of this in your shot, right? If you don't have one, that's fine. If you're still shooting on the iPhone 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, there was no 9, oh yeah. Just remember to stay back as far as you can so that you can crop in and post if you need to and you allow room for things like text or any sort of effects that you're gonna be applying. Let's just go over the accessories that I use to just get that perfect in-between sharpness and motion blur in our image. Right here I have the variable ND filter which essentially is like sunglasses for your camera and they make this for the iPhone and it comes with this case. So you attach it onto the case, slips right in and when you're shooting on a bright, beautiful day, clouds and water just look a lot more soft 
and not so jagged. You'll get a really clean image. This is not product placement. I've just been using the Polar Pro ones because Polar Pro is a brand that I've known as a filmmaker growing up and that's a brand that I trust. Just having the variable ND is a big step in the right direction for getting a way better image on your phone. Now much like any shoot, I'm obviously gonna be using a phone gimbal, but I'm sure if you've seen any of my videos, you don't need me to talk about this any more than I already have. However, I need to reiterate how just crucially important it is to have a gimbal. I don't even care if we're just talking about iPhones, like whether you're using a DSLR or any sort of camera. It is such a significant difference that I would consider a gimbal to be essential. And this is what has convinced me to shoot more on my phone than ever and feel confident in the footage that I get. And we're back. Now I hope this was a great showcase of how you can use a minimal setup, such as a gimbal and just like a phone case and ND filters. And these are optional, by the way, like you don't have to use these. I'm just showcasing how I have personally done it in the past. I've done it without either of these. Our phones are very capable devices at this point. Like they're way more powerful than the cameras that I first bought when I was starting out in the industry. So the main idea is just really knowing what you are going to be shooting and showcasing your talent through minimal lenses. It's more commanding when you're on a Canon R5 with a prime lens than to be shooting on an iPhone. But an iPhone really invites the viewer to be a part of the experience. And I think that's something that we really need to share because I really want to empower people to create just like no community for this. So I really want to start building that. And if there's anything else that you feel like you need from me when it comes to this sort of business in general, definitely feel free to comment it or message me, let me know. Because I do want to shift over over towards, I'm not gonna say the word podcast, but I am gonna be doing more talking head content where it's just you and me, and I'm gonna give you direct advice from personal experiences and tell you how to avoid a ton of the mistakes that I made, tell you how to just make it in this industry because it has been a very long grind and there are a lot of things that I could have done differently that would have just sped everything up. At the end of the day, we're all here to create, so. If this was helpful, best way to let me know is either in the comments, hitting like or subscribing if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, sticking all the way to the end. Love you lots. Keep creating and I will see you in the next one.